I always have a smile on my face, and I feel that some people see me like, all right, he's too happy all the time. He's not really serious, but that's just the person I am. I play serious all the time. I always have a smile on my face, and um, I'm not the one to like beat on my chest and like roar and make noises like that to, to show like my feelings. Basketball is a game. It's a game. It's like poker. Like you don't show your face, like how you feel at that certain time. So I always smile, and you never know how I feel. So I guess some people just kind of don't really see that. Value, man. You hear guys question your motor, your motivation. Well, I like just that. answered that question a while ago, and as I said, um, for me, it's just like uh, I smile all the time when I play play the game of basketball because I enjoy the game and I love the game. And um, I just never show signs of being mad or upset or anything like that. I always have a smile on my face. And uh, I guess some people don't really see that. It, I guess they want to see me like be angry, like show emotion all the time. But that's just not the play I am. I don't really beat on my chest. I don't like yell or anything like that. I'm just more of a happy person. I love playing the game of basketball. Coming to your own, and that, uh, that project label gets put on you. Do you agree with that at all? Or do you feel like you come in next year and make an impact? All I can tell you is that whatever team I get drafted to or whoever I'm with, that I'm going to work my hardest. I'm going to do the best that I could to the best of my ability. And um, I can't dictate the future of what I'm going to do. All I know is I'm going to go out there and give it my all. The scouts and in the mock drafts, a lot of people are sort of hanging you as a high-risk, high-reward player. What does like a label like that sort of mean to you? I mean, uh, like I said earlier, just uh, wherever I go, I'm going to work my hardest. So, um, like I said earlier, uh, everybody's going to have an opinion. You would say something about you to the day you die. So. Uh, I don't really let it stress me or get to me. I just uh, know that I'm a hard worker and I'm going to go out there and work my hardest wherever I go. With the ninth pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Andre Drummond from the University of Connecticut. We saw the emotion that Jay mentioned just a second ago, and you also see Austin Rivers. I'm going to tell you why Rivers looks very happy. He hasn't been picked. He's wanted to go to New Orleans, and the Hornets are back on the clock at 10. But this moment is for the Pistons' latest big man. And the legacy of big men in Detroit, dating back to Bob Lanier and Spider Sally from those championship teams. Lambeer, who could step outside, and now Drummond and Monroe up front together for the Pistons as Andre shakes David Stern's hand, and he's off to the NBA, JP. It's a blessing that I'm here as a Piston today. So uh, it doesn't really matter what number I fall to, I know that. I'm here to work hard, and um, I'm here to be a Piston. How were you able to alleviate some of the fears of the personnel people you worked out for, especially Detroit, those that questioned your motor? Well, Detroit's going to see that uh, I'm a hard worker and that uh, I'm going to put my all in every single day. All right, guys, Detroit's a town that knows about good motors, right? Back to you. He has a, a, a ready-made NBA body. Now, his game, you know, he, he, he's a young, raw kid on the offensive end of the court. He fits the profile of... of, of size and, and skill set um, that we were looking for, looking for a big that could protect the paint, uh, that was going to have a presence. The other team always had to know where he is on defense. That's the type of profile that we've been looking for two years ago, last year. Uh, he fits that. Now, we didn't know he was going to be an 18-year-old kid, but but he definitely fits with what you're talking about. With Andre, talk about uh, what's the one thing you feel you have to address quickly um, as you arrive in the NBA? Um, with the help of my teammates and uh, just the organization and the family out there, I know that uh, I want to talk about my motor and not being able to play hard when we put the rest immediately. Because I know that I'm going to have my teammates, well, my brothers now, to push me. And um, that's definitely going to be put the rest. And my back to the basket game is going to be really good because they have a great coaching staff out there as well. Especially Ben Wallace. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, he one of the greats. Don't help me rebound. <laughs> he gonna teach me how to rebound box out. Oh, yeah. I was like, no way he's gonna be there at nine. And so he said, I think so. I'm gonna call you back at 6.30. Calls back at 6.30. Joe, he's still there at nine. At 7.15, 7.20, I think he may go before you go. You pick Joe. So it, got, it was just back and forth all the way up until the last second. So you know, we were very fortunate. During the course of the uh, selections, uh, was there any time that you felt very comfortable that he would be there? Was it after pick number four? Was it after pick number six? So five. Was five, five, five was the pick. We knew if, if, if Sacramento didn't take him at five, we knew then that there's an excellent chance he's going to be there at nine. Just because we knew what six, seven, and eight needed. 
uh, what their needs were, talking to their GMs, kind of where their head was. Uh, and so as soon as he didn't go five, Thomas Robinson went five, we looked around in the room and were like, this kid's going to be here at nine. Tell us more about him. My daughter is 18 years old, and she's uh, she's gonna be 19 in July. He's younger than her, so that's the first thing about him. He's 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 a baby. He's um, he'll turn 19 years old in August. Uh, very very bright young kid. Um, kind of a computer geek. Um, Helms himself very well, and is uh, just a massive specimen. I mean, just a. Un unbelievable NBA body, but he's but he's young though. You know, he has a lot of growing to do. Joe, what do you feel like? Uh, no, no matter how much growing he does or doesn't do, what can he do for you right away? Well, uh, the, the things that you can look for right away with him will be incredible athleticism uh, from this guy. He's an incredible shot blocker. He can rebound, and if you throw it anywhere near the rim, he can go up and get it. Um, saying all that, you know, he's got. You know, he shoots free throws worse than Ben Wallace. Uh, that's a problem. Um, and offensively, he has to, you know, you know what I'm saying, Greg, he has to learn how to refine this game. The, uh, the very fact that such a young guy gets such a great opportunity, uh, I, I think that we all know that this is the kind of an organization that will be good for him. What could you do as an organization you and Lawrence Frank and his staff to help him grow as a player and as a person. Yeah, you know, uh, last night then, uh, myself, Tom Gores, and uh, Lawrence, we, we met and we were talking late into the night. And we just talked about having great people that work in this organization. If you surround these kids with, with the right people who have the right spirit about themselves, uh, then they can grow. And so I think it's, it's our responsibility just to make sure that we surround him with the best possible people that we can that we can get. Well, I know you're going to do that. Congratulations. Thank Two more you. important picks coming yeah, up. I know yeah, you got to get back to work. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks so much. President of the Pistons Basketball. Get the elevation of that lob pass. Oh, the block by Drummond. Tobias Harris, and here comes the Pistons out on the break. English in the middle, Drummond! Oh, oh my goodness! goodness. Yeah. It throws it yeah. it <laughs> Holy mackerel, and the bitch going crazy on that one. This is why they got him, folks. Beautiful timing on the block. That's on one end of the floor, and then on the complete other end of the floor, the athleticism, the elevation. Tear it down, big fella. <laughs> Good. Another block, and this brings the house down, and here comes the swagger. So I hope it's my nine to five. There's a 25 points per game plus career score, so that tells you a lot. He's at 28 the year. They won in 06. Lob inside for Andre Drummond. That's what he can do. Watch this. Here's Wilson. Pick and roll. Will Bynum, they've collaborated a couple of times on, a, on some nice lobs. The George can catch it with your back to the basket and finish with a reverse dunk.
block. The hood of slums is with me. Don't shake a bottle. Hurt not me. Shades on my face. First I cheat. Gangsters, hustlers, just like me. Wanksters, busters, don't stop me. All what you eat, pussy, not me. Rapping and talking, push you, not me. Ain't trying to be you. I'm trying to be me. Hurt to touch it, read me. Snap, trying to be free. Every guy goes the same old shit. It doesn't happen to Andre and Stanley Washington. No, he made himself available. In fact, he's really, really good at the point, though. He's got three assists all on the run right now. And they take it away from Rogers. Andre to Brandon off the glass. Oh, Andre, a throwdown. Now he's really having fun. All smiles at the Palace. The Pistons with the early flurry against the Sun. George, I told you, this can be an exciting brand of basketball. what it was. He just created space that backed up Whiteside. Left in the third. Watch this move by Drummond. He backs up Whiteside with that power move, gets him on his heels, and then he's wide open for the dunk. That's a great move inside. And then Ilya Sova. Four 
has gone to second. He has 20 and 12 boards. Distance by three. Here's a takeaway by Andre Plate. The passing lane. Rides and Tomlin. Dunk by Drummond. 
that what guy. a play he's going to make every highlight oh. i didn't know what he's doing I thought neither he did i i thought he lost control of it You had one shot, or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment. Would you capture it or just let it slip? Yo. You better lose its mouth in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You
down the floor to do his job. You say, why is he running down the floor? Well, they want him to commit the foul. You don't want one of your main guys to be the one. Jackson. Back out Morris. Wide open look for Morris. Drummond. A.R. Smith comes off. Can't get it. Drummond. Jackson feeds Morris. Irving on him. Spins. There's Thompson with a double team. Gets it to Drummond. And a foul. Good recognition for Marcus Morris and a chance for a three-point play. The question is, how do you stumble into this? You can stumble into it by getting a stop and then pushing the basketball with pace. It forces the Cavs to be in mismatch problems all throughout the half-court set. Morris drops it off the Drummond, gets the basket and the contact. But they've got to play with pace. The Cavs are too good in the half-court set defensively. Second foul on J.R. Smith. Smith passes up the three. Irving. Can't get at the ball. Thompson. Another offensive rebound. Shot blocked by Drummond. His third rejection. Here's Harris inside. Drummond on the tip. Pistons back on top. Open look for Kevin Love. Drummond said you want to win. Well, don't tell me. Show me. How about contesting, coming down, blocking the shot, running in transition, then winding up with the offensive footback? So fired up, and so is Andre Drummond here on the second half. But give credit first to Tristan Thompson's six-second shot, but Drummond with the block and then run the floor rim to rim for the second shot. Drummond, Drummond grab it. A six-point lead for the Cavs. 
an impressive beginning to the second. Irving strips him on the way to the basket. Transition time for the Cavs. Boy, J.R. Smith missed LeBron. Boy, what a pass, but it's not a meter for him on the yeah. sideline. That's much different. Third round is a head Cody of checking LeBron James on the defensive end. Run. Big possession for him inside to Drummond. He's deep and Drummond gets it to go. Plays off the bounce of his size. Three point drive for Fry. Too strong. The shooting a better percentage from behind the arc. Here tonight is Drummond who's fouled. And the Cavs on twos shooting it well. 50% on threes and now 15 to 35. A touch better. is 3 for 12 from the free throw line. Hey, this summer, don't miss the premiere of TNT's highly anticipated new series, Animal Kingdom, Tuesday, June 7th, 9, 8 Central on TNT. This is the first of our TNT doubleheader tonight. The Portland and the Clippers. Familiar pattern, some of the Pistons have dealt with all year. moves that they don't think enough about us. Upheld Irving to go away. Gets inside. Blocked by Drummond. Stanley Johnson on the pull-up. Drummond the offensive board. Delavadova in and out. Drummond the rebound. They get some of these guys. Johnson 19. Drummond just 22. Longwell Pope. Drummond with the left hand. This is a solid move. Yeah, Drummond is this year set the NBA record for worst free throw percentage in league history. And that's what he shot. 586 free throws. And it's not like he doesn't work on it. He keeps talking about it. He works really hard. I'm nervously watches. He goes one for two. Mike, he's got to be tough in the sense of 
Make a miss those free throws. Adova, three pointer. Way off. Drummond Hudson and Reggie Jackson. Jackson misses. Drummond. Offensive rebound. And he's fouled. NBA yet nine games of 20 rebounds or more. Flips it up and flips it in. And Detroit back up by two. He led the lead. Thank you, uh, thank you all for coming. Sorry to uh, keep you waiting, but we've got uh, some rules and regulations and timing things we had to do with the uh, with the league. Uh, it's obviously a, a very big uh, day for our organization.